Hello. In this video I'm going to try and do two things. Explain firstly why I'm interested in a quarter of a century old laptop computer, just in case you needed a reason to buy more junk. And secondly, I'm making this video as a public service, because if you have an Apple PowerBook G3 Pismo or Lombard or any of the other models, and you're looking at upgrading the hard drive and the disk drive is broken, then you will need to do what I did in this video. So if you just want to skip to the bit about how to put an SSD in one of these things, I will show the time you need to skip to on screen. So what is this thing? Right, so this is a Pismo. A Pismo is the nickname of the last in the line of PowerBook G3s with this kind of wiggly plastic form factor. These are basically powerful laptops from 1997 to 2000. They were the MacBook Pros of their era. Why am I interested in it? Various reasons. One, I'm interested in playing with these because my musical heroes used OS 9 running PowerBooks just like this one. You can find pictures of people such as Aphex Twin playing with a black curvaceous laptop like this. This was the kind of laptop that you had in that first era of laptop on stage musicians. And the other thing about that is that as a result, there are tons and tons and tons of really weird, fruity, interesting pieces of software that run on the operating system called OS 9, which is what can run on power books like this. There's a fantastic blog made by a person called by Panda Shaw Fly called Missing Music. And if you just have a little leaf through Missing Music, I'll link it below, you'll see examples of all of this amazing stuff. And what you need to know about this software is that because it is so old, it's all available for free. There are many websites like Macintosh Repository where you can just help yourself to tons and tons of software, FTP it or USB stick it into your OS 9 computer and run it. And we're talking really weird fruity things like early versions of Max MSP, Turbo Synth, which was like a little modular synthesizer, and also of interest to me specifically, I can run the original editor for the Nord Modular, which I have here. Now, it is possible to make a Nord Modular's editor run on a modern Mac, but it's absolutely possible to run it on this machine because this is absolutely of the era that this thing was released. Above all, though, I'm interested to run a few programs that are really hard to run on modern Macs, like, for example, Player Pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the tracker program that Aphex used to make drugs. He'd be using a laptop very similar to this one. In fact, there is a picture of him like making Drux tracks on something like this. Could have been this. So I'm curious to try it. Not because I'm going to make music like him, because I'm not him. But what I find fascinating is this sense of musical archaeology. What can I learn by giving myself the interesting limitations that the artist that I love, who made the music that I love, had. Because at the heart of any choice of software or hardware, we're talking about an interesting limitation and what those limitations will unlock. The other beauty is that these things don't cost a lot of money. I can't remember exactly what I paid for this computer, but let's just look it up, shall we? I paid £42.59 for this computer. Here's the rub though. It was sold without a hard drive. People sell laptops all the time without hard drives because of security concerns. Understandable, but what this means is that we need to put a hard drive into it and we also need to get an operating system running on that hard drive or the computer is a brick. Pismos came with DVD-ROM drives. There was one in here, absolutely amazing design. I haven't even talked about the design of the thing, the way that the fronts like flip up. Words to the wise, by the way, is when you take the drive out, be really careful you don't roll the computer back, exactly like I just did, because you put pressure on the USB ports. And by the way, 
Let's talk about how many ports are on this thing. Holy smokes. This is also why the Pismo was beloved for music production. By the way, I will show on screen possibly one of the greatest photos ever. It's the guy who created the JV1080, JD800 and also Omnisphere sitting on the grass in California with his Pismo. Now, what a look that is. And he probably bought a Pismo because it has all of this I.O., including this natty new port called a Firewire port, as well as this other new port called a USB port. This means that you can connect audio interfaces to it, and there's loads of old ones that still work, like DigiDesign 002s. I bring this up to say lots of ports and connectivity. Anyway, how do you upgrade this and put an SSD in it when the disk drive doesn't work. So first things first is how you open it and look at the drive bay. It's really rather lovely. So here's this gorgeous bronze keyboard. This feels delightful. Absolutely love the smoked look. Now in here somewhere, and I wanna show you that there's this little hole here. Somewhere on the floor of my studio is a little white grub screw that goes in there. You unscrew it to undo it. I lost mine immediately. And if you look here, can you see there's a little catch here and there's a little catch here. You push both these catches down and look what happens. The whole keyboard just flips out. Be careful, there is a connector here. And basically this little connector, you just pull upwards and it pops out. It's just a little do for there. Then the keyboard assembly is removed. It's unbelievably easy to get into this thing. And then inside, we see the space where a hard drive would have lived. When I got mine, the person had removed it in fear. And what you need to do is unscrew the two screws here. I have obviously already removed these. Unscrew these two. This lifts out. And then this exposes where you can upgrade some RAM. And basically in here, what you're wanting to do is remove this. And you should, I can see here, there is a little pull string. There was probably a long thing attached to that that's been torn off. So you may find you're able to pull, 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 and then you remove this little caddy. And inside this would be your original drive if you buy one with a drive fitted. And if we look here, there is a little ribbon cable and this is what the end of the drive attaches to. So this is a PATA, P-A-T-A, IDE style. And what you're not going to do is you're not going to put a mechanical drive in here anymore. What you're going to want to do is put one of these in. So what this is, is two things. This is a Amazon Jeff Bezos special, which is a, a PATA sort of M2 caddy thing. It's a sort of pretend hard drive. And what it's actually letting you do is put this in it. Now this is an M2 SATA drive. This is the type that have what's called a B and an M connector. That's because it has two little cutouts on it. Now um, you need to get an M2 SATA drive to put into your caddy to then go into your uh, computer. And I got this like Transcend 120 gigabyte drive because other thing, 128 gigabytes is the maximum amount of space that this thing can address. I think you can put larger drives in it. It's, maybe you can partition them into multiple 128 gig partitions, but otherwise 128 is the limit. So I just put a 128 one. So I put this in and that basically means that I have an M2 sort of little patter thing. I realise I've now bent that. Well done. Let's bend that back, shall we? Gosh, uh, well done, mate. We'll fix that in a sec. So basically the idea is this goes in here. There is actually a little plastic cover that goes on it and then it all fits back in. Now, what you will possibly find is that you can't even boot your PowerBook. And that's because of a weird thing called PRAM, P-R-A-M. PRAM is the name of a battery that's inside the PowerBook that retains the um, information about the time and date. That's the battery there, this thing, but it's dead because it's 25 years old. 
<laughs> Lord knows if you're 25, you're nearly dead. So um, what happens is that you can't actually boot the computer. So what you do is you have to undo this. Here is a little doofer with black, white and red cables. Pull it out and that will reset your PRAM, as it's called. There is also this other thing you can do, which is that you can boot the computer holding Option, Apple, P and R to reset your PRAM. And I found that I needed to basically futz around with unplugging and replugging this, as well as pushing Control, Option, P and R when trying to do the next stage. So the next stage is that you've got your hard drive, you've put it in, you've put it all back together, and you now need to get OS 9, you've pushed that back on and you've clipped this in. You now need to get OS 9 on this computer. How are you going to do that? Because you haven't got a disk drive. What you're going to do is you're going to make a USB stick that has an OS 9 boot kit on it because you can boot a Pismo from a USB stick. That little piece of information is not very obvious on the internet, I can tell you. It's part of the reason why I'm making this video. You can boot a Pismo from a USB stick. So the way that I made this USB stick is that I followed the instructions in another YouTube video, which I will link to below. Bless the person who made the video. It's, it's like could not be more quiet. But what you do is you go to uh, this website, you download this special DSK disk image, you unzip it after you've done that, got me a few times, and then here's the rub. You have to use a PC. Ironic that you have to use a PC to create this, and you use this thing called like <clears throat> HDD boot tool something. Oh Christ, I should have written this down. I'll show it on screen and I will say them on screen now. You need to use HDD raw copy tool in order to make the thing. And what you do is you plug a two gigabyte or higher USB stick into your PC. You use the program, you point it at the disk image, it writes the disk image to the USB stick, and then you should be able to boot from it. I don't know if it matters the type of USB stick you use, but I would strongly recommend avoiding USB 3. The sensible person in me says, use an old USB stick that has a chance of being USB 1, because you are obviously plugging this into a device that's well before USB 2 even, and certainly 3. So you've burned this stick. Then what you do is you plug it into the back of the Pismo. We'll assume you know how to do that. Be very careful now you have a USB stick because tipping the Pismo back will put pressure on the USB stick. Ask me how I know that that could be a problem. And then what you do is you push the power button while holding Option. You hold option and you push the power button and you will find that the Pismo will boot up with this special screen. Wait a little while, it will show you this disk image and then you can click the right arrow, go in and then what you do is you, using the following instructions which are really well designed in the boot disk thing, you format the drive that's in it and then you can install OS 9 on it, and then you can remove the disk thing, restart the computer, and it will boot into OS 9 using the hard drive. That whole process has taken me more than six months to do because I have loads of other stuff to do. I also bought, I didn't even come with a power supply and I had to buy a power supply. I would strongly recommend that you buy a real Pismo supply because it uses this incredibly strange three and a half millimeter audio connector in a, like, with a collar. That, that is super weird. Um, oh man, I bought uh, like a whole supply that didn't work and just buy a real Pismo supply from someone. Oh, oh God, yeah. But also be careful because there was a, a recall of some Pismo supplies and because they went on fire. <laughs> and so don't buy one of the ones that went on fire. And I can't remember how I knew that it wasn't one of those, Mine's an M5159. 
And I think that somewhere there is, I read an old article that was about the recall and then one, and it was like, it's serials of, the, you know, these serials not including M5159, which is what I have. Man, I'm just laughing because it's like a lot of stuff, a lot of like silly, weird, finicky things. But above all, I would say the biggest problem of all is burning sticks because Max, modern Max, I have a, M4 Max over there, it just won't let you burn discs in the same way because it's so frady cat about letting you meddle with drives. There's a thing you can do with this, like, where you, like, pseudo DD using terminal. No, didn't work, tried it. Just use a PC. Find a PC, find a mate, go to their house, burn your stick. That's the best way. And then, with it all in and, oh, in and on... Um, it works. And then you can explore the wonderful world of audio from the year 2000, you know? Make your drugs killer in Player Pro. Oh, you have not done that very well. Let's hope I never need to remove this for any other reason. Make your own drugs. Kids, don't do drugs. Um, kids, just use what you've got. Like, you know, just use your, like, current PC, whatever it is. Anyway, um, you've made it this far. You understand. You know it's fun to mess with old technology uh, with the <laughs> fringe benefit being that this thing can play SimCity 2000 and it can also play uh, Doom and Warcraft 2, Total Annihilation, you know. And it does that. It goes chung. That's a wave station apparently, isn't it? So, so the story goes... Man, there's just like a real pleasing sort of charm to OS9. Like, I never had this. I never had this. I was like too young. It, when this came out, when this was new, and by the way, this computer, when it came out, was the modern equivalent of four and a half thousand dollars. So I think it would be fair to say that it's lost some of its value. It's a 400 megahertz, is this one. And you can get 500 megahertz. It's got a gig of RAM. It's more than good enough to run Doom, which, let's be real, that's, that's the main thing we're going to do on this. Oh, one other thing, just to say, because this is something that happened to me. This came with a battery. There was a battery in this left side. When I finally got this connected to power, um, I left it plugged in because I thought I would, you know, let it charge and see if it could hold a charge. Uh, and I came across to find that the battery was incredibly warm. It was hot and I removed the battery and the plastic was starting to crinkle on it. I shudder to think what would have happened if I'd left it. So I'd strongly urge you to consider not using a battery in one of these. If it has an old battery, especially a third party one, which is what it looked like, maybe don't. Anyway, here we are, OS9. Isn't it charming? And it booted all by itself off of that, proving six months staring at this thing was all worth it. That's it. Good luck and thanks very much.